Hey guys, welcome to my screencast tutorial. I'm going to jump right in by showing you where to find the software that you need. This video might get a little complicated because basically I'm using a screencast software to show you how to use the same screencast software, but we'll get through it somehow. I'm going to hop on the internet and I'm going to head to techsmith.com. Techsmith is the company that makes a lot of this kind of software. Under their products page, there's two that you should pay attention to. We have Camtasia Studio for Mac as well. And we also have one called Jing, which is a free version. Um, it's not as quite as powerful and it limits you to five minute videos. But if you either have something, um, if you can't really get Camtasia to work for some reason, or later on you want a good simple product to make five minute or under videos, Jing is another good option. So go ahead and download the free trial of Camtasia. Um, they're going to require you to, you know, make an account and they'll send you a, probably they'll send you like a license code that will let you work for 30 days. Um, and come back when you have that installed and we'll get started with the actual software itself. One part that I can't show you is what it actually looks like for me to record because I'm currently recording myself. But I want to point out that when I finished my first clip, I saved that clip into a new folder I made. I put it on my desktop. I called mine screencast video. And inside that folder you see I have one called Capture One. It's actually probably a good idea to rename those uh, with something that makes sense to keep them straight. So I'll call that one Introduction. Actually it's not going to let me um, do that because I actually have it open in the software. But as you save they might want to think about naming them something appropriate. Um, and let me go and hop in real quick to the software. It automatically imported my little clip into the software. You can see that it has volume levels and everything. I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to save the project. This is going to be different from the clip. So I'm going to have clips in here and I'm going to call this my screencast project. This by itself <coughs> is not a video. It will never be a video until I produce it and turn it into one. So right now I have one clip, the first clip that I made. I'm currently making the second clip. But this is the basic interface of most video editing software. And it's pretty simple for our purposes. Um, I have one track right now and basically everything I do is going to land on this one track. I can make this bigger or smaller. I'm not actually changing it. I'm just changing how big or small it is. I'm zooming in and out. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I have room to put uh, my next clips. And along this toolbar I have the main tools that we're going to need to enhance our video and make it a little bit better. So I'm going to stop right here and end this clip so we have at least two um, to work with in this demo. So I'm back and you'll see that I have my two clips up here and what's called the clip bin. Um, one annoying thing about their new version of the software which is 8.0 is that it doesn't automatically put them next to each other. Um, I don't know why it doesn't do that. So what you can do is you can really just grab this and move it wherever you want. I think it's easiest to keep it on the same track and just put it right next to itself just like that. But you see how simple it is to move a clip around or if I wanted to take this one and put it before that one. They really do, do just sort of move through a drag and drop process. So let me get it back to the way it was on track one. The other thing is if I want to clip the end of the beginning of a track it's really simple. I can just take it like this and right now I am just cutting away the end of that clip. I'm going to press Control Z and undo that. But that's how you would clip the end. If I want to clip the beginning I have this handy dandy slider up here and if I want to take a part out of the middle, I can just highlight a section that I don't want and press the cut. And there it goes. I just uh, clipped out that little section. I'm going to press Control Z to bring it back. Of course, now we have three. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and put it at the end there. And now I want to talk about how to use some of these enhancement tools. So if I find a spot in the actual video where I want to highlight something. Let's, like this screen is a good example. I know at this part of the video I'm talking about uh, the various pieces of software that you can use for screencasts. I'm going to use the zoom and pan tool and I'm going to basically just drag these little boxes up to the appropriate piece so that I can really highlight the part of the screen I want you to see and pay attention to. And then after a few seconds you see if I press the play button it's actually going to play back what it would look like at that point. Um, that gets confusing if I'm recording right now. But once I finish with this, I'm just moving a little slider 
it would be important for me to take the zoom and pan and put it back to the way it was. Otherwise, it'll stay on that little tiny piece of screen um, the entire time, and I don't want that. So that zoom and pan, it's a great way to bring the focus in where you want it, and also to show um, little button clicks here and there that might not be clear if you're looking at the whole screen. Right next to it, I have callouts, which are just little captions I can throw inside the video. And if I just click one, it automatically appears here. Um, it's another great way to show focus or emphasis. And so this is what I was talking about, Jing. And Jing was the free software. And I can manipulate this arrow however I want. And I can rotate it um, with these tools. But it's, it's really easy to use. For anyone who's feeling kind of adventurous, I'll point out that you can also bring things into the timeline, into this clip bin, by using the import media function. And often I'll do things like bring in pictures, if I'm doing a little Minecraft tutorial, and often I'll bring in audio. So let me grab my audio soundtrack real quick. And I'll just bring all of these in just to show you. So now I have some audio pieces down here and a picture right here, and it really is as simple as dragging this down to a certain part in the timeline like that and now at this part of the video my little spider pops up for about five seconds I can extend that by dragging it or minimize it by dragging it the other way and I can manipulate him just the same way I would, no I would normally do so you can bring in pictures often I bring in pictures of the keyboard if I'm talking about a specific key on the keyboard I brought in world maps if I'm talking about a certain area of the globe that kind of thing. And if you really want to try and put some music in there, it's it can be a nice addition, but I'm absolutely not requiring you to do that. Um, it's as simple as dragging down and popping it on here. I would probably put the music on a different track than the video and a different track than these little callouts. So see, each one lives on its own little channel. But now I have music along with my video. At this point my video is kind of a mess, but let's just pretend that I was done and I had edited everything and I'm ready to produce an actual video. I have to do go to produce and share. Inside that menu I have several options. I recommend that you go with MP4 only up to 720p. That's basically a high definition video. Um, it'll be a little bit large. If you want a little bit smaller file size you can do MP4 480p only. It won't be quite as pretty, but it will be smaller. Um, they have a function that I've never tried before that I guess will upload it straight to YouTube, but I'm going to recommend you stick with these. And I'm going to press next a couple times, give it a name, tell it where to save, and after a few minutes of rendering, I'll have a fully functional video that should play on any platform. At this point, I feel like I've gone over the important parts of how to use Camtasia. At this point, my timeline is kind of a mess. I've got a lot of things going on. When I'm done um, talking to you, I'm going to go through and make this video look a lot nicer and add some transitions and that kind of thing. But the important thing is that you download and give it a shot. Um, do that sooner rather than later so that if you do have any questions or major hurdles, you can contact me and we can sort them out. Um, if this absolutely isn't working for you, contact me and we can figure out some alternative assignment. Um, but I think if you get, um, get in there and try it out, you'll find that it's a really powerful program and you can do a lot of neat things with it. Um, if you want to, feel free to explore some of the other options here. You'll notice that on my videos I have cursor effects where um, the cursor is highlighted and when I click certain things happen. Um, that's obviously right here. Transitions are things that happen between little clips, kind of like PowerPoint. Um, but those are the main functions that you need to use. Um, so you're shooting for a five to six minute video that demonstrates to your students some basic skill. Um, and I hope you have a lot of fun doing it. So let me know how it goes and good luck.